though you really you should say no you're so And I'm Lavinia. Well, we are the Juicy Ladies, and we have the absolutely awesome privilege of being able to speak to Jahaziel. Mm, it feels so yeah. special. So, um, you know, everybody has been talking about Jahaziel, and we have been fortunate enough to grab him on Skype. Jahaziel, how are you doing? Hey, hey, what's happening? All right, so let's get straight into it, shall we? Yeah? Mm-hmm. So, our first question is this, Jahaziel. Yeah. You've been a prominent Christian, I think you know that, figure, for, uh, for a long time. So everything that's been going on with you of late has really sent shockwaves across the Christian world and further afield. So can you help us to understand, like, what brought the shift on and where did it start? Where did it start? That's a good question. Um, I can't, I don't know if I can really put my finger on exactly where it started, but I know there were certain points that were quite significant for me. Um, one of them was um, the Africa tour that I did with um, Truth and Ambassador in, what was that? I can't even remember what year that was now. That was about five years ago. I can't remember what year it was. Um, was it 212, two something like that? Oh, I don't remember. But anyway, doing that Africa tour, for me, going to Africa was always something that I'd kind of looked forward to. And you know maybe kind of slightly romanticised, but I just I just thought there'd be some kind of connection. And going there, I mean we went to a lot of places as well. We toured a lot of Africa, um, uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Kenya, Nigeria, Botswana, you know you name so many places. Um, but by and large, my experience there was like it was like going to East London. Like the church experience that I had there was no different than what I would get here, type of thing. Um, I found very little connection to um, African tradition, like, you know, that dates back. I mean, not talking recent tradition. I mean, like, you know, spiritual tradition. It, it seemed that like all the songs were just rehashed European songs. Um, I remember being in one church in Kenya, and, you know, it's hot, Delikia hot. And then the pastor's there with his shirt tied, done up. And I'm like, who taught you to dress like this? Who, do you know what I'm saying? Why does this building even look like this? And it, you know, I just I felt I felt a bit saddened really, but it, I came back and then I started to read more about um, you know spirituality that pre-existed Christianity, you know spirituality that pre-existed Judaism, um, which dates more back to Africa, and um, and I found it to be really impressive to be honest. I found it to be really impressive, and then I started to look at things like church history, um, you know, and seeing things like the Crusades. Um, Columbus, the missionaries that were sent to the Congo, and how 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 brutal um, you know these Christians were, and I know a lot of Christians will say, well, that's not the real church, but it's easy to disassociate yourself from anything you don't like, and then just cling to that which you know you do like. But I found the church to have a whole like blood trail behind it, um, and this type of evangelism that we see nowadays of you know Jesus loves you was not how Christianity was spread throughout the world. Um, and it was much more of a gospel of believe what we believe or we will brutally kill you. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? The witch hunts, the inquisition. I mean, there's just so many things. Um, so those kind of things started to build up. I was working for a church at the time and I found it more and more difficult to teach stuff that I fundamentally just couldn't agree with. Uh, yeah, I just kind of took a step back, really. That's all it was intended. I intended it to be at first was to take a step back, and then that led to me thinking like, hang on, I like this step back. I like not having the pressure to have to believe. Like when I say step back, I just took a position and said, you know what? I would choose to believe from what I read of the Bible, what makes sense to me, and I'll reject what doesn't. And again, that was based on looking at how the Bible was put together, looking at the the Nicaea Council and things like this. That really led me to question, knowing that verses have been added to the ver- to the Bible, books have been taken out, and all of these types. So it just led me to a point, I said, you know what, let me just work with what makes sense to me and pause on what doesn't. And when I did that, I, I just became very comfortable in not going to church. I mean, I, again, from a biblical point of view, I saw no command that says, you know, thou must go to church. Um, 
I, I, I found much more comfortability in not in less hierarchy, not having to refer to anyone as like pastor or or any reverend or anything. Do you know what I mean, just kind of dealing with all people equally. Um, yeah, so. So I'm talking a lot, and yeah. <laughs> waiting talk. for this opportunity. But just for people that don't understand, so you talked about where you come from and what sort of led you out, what led you to where. Like, if you could summarize it and put a name on it, what is it that you, you believe now? Name. Does yeah, it have a name even? True. Yeah, it does. It doesn't have a name other than freedom. <laughs> it's it's freedom. Freedom. It, basically the right to, to, to choose, to make up my own mind and my own decision on what I do and don't believe. Um, whereas religion, or any religion, will kind of have a construct that you have to fit into. It says these are what we believe, A, B, C, and D. And to be uh, whatever that religion is, you have to believe those things. Um, I reserve the right to pick and choose what I believe from any religion, from any book, from any culture, from any Jamie, as long as I find it to be true, wise, loving, I, I accept it. So it, it doesn't have a box at all. All right. I've not left one religion to join another one. Okay. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, but you know, whilst you were under the uh, the banner of Christianity, um, you had a lot of eyes on you because of the elevation that you had. Um, so when you decided to step back. Like how did that impact on, well not impact, how did your family and close friends respond? Like Jahazi or this guy and now your friend. Yeah. <laughs> the guy. <laughs> I think you know, you know what I mean though, you know what I mean. Jahazi or the minister to now Jahazi or the, the free thinker. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, that's why it took me some time, I think, to really kind of make a decision because um, I, I did have a lot of um, like friends, family, you know, my whole social circle was predominantly Christian. Um, I was working for a church, so my income was tied up with the church. And I was doing gigs, you know, I had a record deal with a, a Christian label. Like, I had nothing to gain from taking this position, you know what I'm saying? Um, which, which is funny as well. I just, on a side note, I say that because, you know, my Facebook... Um, not that I really much these, these days, but for a while I did. And I get accused from, from a lot of people of saying that I'm like, it's because I'm, I'm after fame or um, it's a publicity stunt or something like this. And I'd be like, if you only knew that this has cost me, like, I, I've lost, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, so much money because of this. It's not, it couldn't be further from that. But, you know, some, you know, everyone's got different opinions. But, um, um, yeah, it, it took me a while to kind of have the guts to, to really stand up for what I believe because I had a lot of those ties. You know, as far as what the people think now, friends and family, I, to be honest with you, I keep a very small circle. Um, and I just try and I try to, to be around people who I find encourage me, not necessarily encourage me down any kind of path, but encourage me to just be me and love me for who I am. Um, I found from the majority of Christians, to be honest, a lot of Christians... Not necessarily the people that know me, but, but Christians that support me or support my music, um, to take a kind of a view which is like, um, you know, like I am, I am lost or I am hellbound or blah blah blah, and um, so yeah, so I don't really regard their opinion that much to be honest. So as to what people think, I don't really know. Do I have Christians in my circle? In my circle? Small yeah. A couple. <laughs> a couple. A couple. And um, there are a couple of people that, that and I say that because like um, I, I just love people, regardless of what you want to call yourself. If you're a good person, you're a good person. But I did for a minute kind of have to take some time away from from Christians who, who to be honest, just have an assumption they, they that they're right already. So it's hard to kind of discuss and you know reason on stuff when one person already believes before we even enter the discussion that they're right do you know what i'm saying so i'm cool with people regardless what you you know christian muslim whatever you want to call yourself if us discussing means having you know just us as two human beings honestly discussing our views um if it's just going to be a case of someone throwing scriptures at me and and um under the assumption that 
well, this is what the Bible says, so therefore it's right. When I can show you a lot of stuff in the Bible that you wouldn't agree with. <laughs> but that's another discussion again. Um, yeah, I just, I kind of deliberately took some time out. And um, a couple of people, man, like Ephraim, who's like, you know, a really good friend of mine, very wise guy as well, very intelligent dude. I deliberately kind of said to him that I've got to take time because um, if I, it would be easy for him to influence my thinking, do you know what I'm saying? And I, and I decided I didn't want to have someone else's um, belief system. I wanted to, to work out what I believe for myself, which means I need to take some time away from being indoctrinated or influenced by people that are very persuasive, do you know what I'm saying? a little bit about discipleship um, a little later on, but, you know, plenty of people decide, come into Christianity and decide maybe it's not for them. Yeah. And they sort of leave quietly. <laughs> Why did you choose to, to leave yes. so ceremoniously and vocally yes. on yes. social media? Yes, yes. I, I felt, I, I, that's a very good question. I definitely felt the need to do that. And, um, it's funny because for years, as a Christian artist, I was held for being vocal. People wanted me to be vocal, you know what I'm saying? Then as soon as I'm not chanting what they want me to chant, they're like, well, can you go quietly? It's like, hell no, I'm not gonna go quietly. I'm as vocal as I ever have been. Um, especially when it's down to things like injustice um, and inequality and issues like these, I've never been one to be quiet about those things, you know what I'm saying? And I think the church has swept so many things under the carpet for so long, historically. Um, and, you know, people often leave quietly because they just fear the backlash. Like, let me go quietly because I just don't want the grief. Well, I'm, I bring it on. I'm not frightened of the grief, you know what I'm saying? But I will speak out that against that which I disagree with. Um, I've seen a lot, both from a congregation point of view and a leadership point of view. I've seen a lot with my church experience, and fair enough, I've only seen like, what, 20 years or whatever, but in the 20 years that I've been in the Christian church, I've seen enough things that I, I, I can be vocal about from my personal experience, and no one can't take that away from me. Well, I've seen, seen good things as well, don't get me wrong, I've seen very good things, but <laughs> I expect to only highlight the good things. I mean, let's be fair, I spent nearly 20 years highlighting the good things, mm -hmm. do you know what I'm saying? So let me be entitled to a couple minutes to speak about some of the other stuff as well. Were you surprised? Then by the, the reams and reams and reams of comments and the attention from the media that, that you're coming out vocally attracted? No, because Expect years ago I would have done the same thing. Yeah, I get, I get some messages from some people and I look at it and I laugh because I'm like, that really was me a couple years ago. I mean, I've had some of the most ignorant, um, state, you know, oh, you, I mean, Christianity, just like in, it, in the world, you've got a whole variety of people, isn't it? And it would be, it would be wrong for me to say this one person represents all of Christianity, because that's, that's definitely not true. But they do exist. You can get some of the wildest characters in church. I mean, to be quite frank, I've seen some of the most loving people I know outside of the church. I've seen some of the most unloving people I've ever met within the church. Um, so, excuse me. Do you think, though, that maybe some of that, I don't know you in the past to have spoken um, negatively against things. You've always spoken positively for your faith. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know you to necessarily point the finger and speak down on on other things. Yeah. Um, whereas it seems like when you, particularly when you became heavily vocal on social media, it was almost like not only am I speaking up for my new belief system, but I'm doing that by speaking down on my previous and maybe that has been slightly slightly I, I don't i don't i don't i don't think i've been vindictive or you know just spiteful so it's just name calling or putting down for, for any reason i've been i think i've been specific about the things which i'm criticizing do you know what I mean i i think i have i've tried to be um and um and I think that those those issues, if it's the truth, if or even if it's not the truth, if those issues are real, then they should be investigated rather than just kind of swept aside and say, well, if it's not nice, we're not trying to hear it. Like, do you know what I'm saying? There are some things that, that, that issues I have concerning the church, concerning the Bible, concerning God, uh, as the Bible presents God, that I, I find barbaric. Like, let's, you know, I'm not going to tone it down. I find the, the concept of this... Bill so apparently benevolent loving God 
drowning the earth, I find that barbaric. Um, especially when you're not just talking about, okay, yeah, the, 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 the rapists and murderers got drowned. Okay, what about the babies? Did they deserve to be drowned? What about the mothers? Did they deserve to be drowned? Like, I, I, now, I've heard theological arguments to a lot of these things, so we could go around in circles, which I'm saying, and, you know, someone explaining them. But um, my conclusion personally is that I do not, I, do, I, don't, I don't resonate with, with what, a lot of what I read about about them. All right, so um, some people on the thread have said, oh, he must have never been saved. Um, but then we've seen that you tweeted earlier um, in February, you said, I was never faking, I was 100% real to something that proved to me to be fake. Can you expand on what you mean by that? Yeah, um, I think, I mean, I said that probably in defence, in kind of self-defence, and to be honest, I think, if you, in, in answer to your other question, it's about why I put things down. I think some of it might have just been self-defense, you know what I'm saying? That you get attacked so often, eventually you're going to bite back, you know what I'm saying? I think some of that might have just been, that might have just been ego. But um, to answer your question, um, how would I explain that? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, th th that question came up. People were like, uh, I kept seeing these tweets and comments about, I was never saved, the people text sending me all these messages saying you were never of the fold and blah blah blah. And um, you know, truth be told, no one has a clue. It, it, it's, 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 it's an anomaly really. You can, it, it's not like you can explain or you can prove who is and who isn't whatever. It's, it's a, it seems to me like a figment of people's imagination. You know what I'm saying? Like, how can you evidence? Is there any tangible evidence to prove who is and who isn't? Um, a, a genuine Christian. All I know is that what I heard, I believed of all the belief I had in me. I, I took literally and lived out and lived it publicly. So no one can tell me, oh, he wasn't really on, do you know what I'm saying, honest. And no one has a clue about, you know, how much I gave and sacrificed for my belief. But I know my, my own self, I did that genuinely. Now, um, at the end of it, you know, I, I got to a point where I had to evaluate, okay, has this faith journey that, that I've been on, has it produced the, 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 the results that I, that I wanted it to or that I believed it would in my life, do you know what I mean? Now, I had to start really just calculating black and white things. Okay, in my 20 years, have I seen a genuine miracle? Now, I'm not talking that I had a headache and now I don't have a headache. I mean, like, miracles that can, can weigh up with what I read in the book, do you know what I'm saying? And, and no, quite frankly, not one. Do you know what I mean? Or I've heard of stuff, but none of it doctor verifiable. None of it with a doctor's certificate that says, yes, this is 100%. Now, the stuff that I had seen, I see outside of the church, people that healed of cancer. I, I, my, my, my nephew's not a Christian, and he was born with, um, the doctor said he had um, bronchitis when he was born, and his mum said, no, he doesn't. So she told the doctor, no, he doesn't. They said, but we need to put him on medication. She said, no, you don't. He's now 19 years old, he's never had a breathing problem in his life. Now some would attribute that, you know, if whatever religion you're in, you'd attribute that to your God. But my point is that these, these natural phenomena happen in nature everywhere. It's not exclusive to the church or to Christianity. Um, but I have seen nothing that weighs up to what the Bible teaches, nothing. Even the whole tongues thing, um, you know, um, nothing like what I read in. in, in um, Can I ask you, did you ever have an experience. You know, when you, at the beginning you get saved and what have you, did a lot of people uh, hold on to Christianity, maybe not as much because of what it says in the Bible, but because of an experience. Did you, do you ever remember having an experience personally, almost 20 years? I've had many experiences, many, many experiences, and, and I still do, 